Today I'm working on this Volkswagen Golf which has a huge dent almost down the complete height of the door. Using a special cold glue system from Glexo, I'm going to attempt to pull this damage out to restore this door back to its original state. Hi everyone, it's Jake here from First Track Dents and welcome back for another Paint This Dent Repair video. So today we're working on this Volkswagen Golf which has a huge dent which goes down almost the complete height of the door. So on this job I'm setting myself a challenge of seeing how much of this damage I can pull out using only this amazing cold glue system from Glexo. So I've seen this system used by a lot of other PDR techs online and thought it was about time to check this out for myself. Now this kit comes in this really smart looking wooden case and if we look inside we can see that we have a choice of these two round sizes of metal pulling tabs and two metal horizontal crease pulling tabs and the glue is wrapped up in this special paper kept in the front of the case. Now these metal tabs are compatible with your normal slide hammer which you would usually use for your hot gluing tabs. Now the Glexo cold glue pulling system is a type of super sticky black adhesive which when applied to one of the metal tabs that comes in the kit provides a tremendous amount of pulling power that allows you to pull out large sections of damage without all the usual mess that comes with traditional hot glue pulling systems and best of all there's no waiting times for the glue to go off. Now when this job came in I thought it would be a great challenge to see how well this system could perform and would be a great test to see how much of this damage could be pulled out with the Glexo cold glue system. Right, let's see how I got on. Right, looking face on at this door, the overall width of the damage is approximately 550 millimeters and the height is around 650 millimeters. Now I do know this was caused by a low speed collision which has created various sections of damage. The most obvious damage being these two main low areas on the top and bottom here. And if we look more closely at this damage, we can see that when the door was pushed in, it caused the side impact beam to push into the outer door skin as shown by this diagonal ridge here. And looking at the bottom section of the door frame here, we have a very hard ridge caused by the internal door frame shown here in yellow, pushing into the outer skin, which can be very difficult to remove. And the last thing to mention is that we have some very minor paint surface scratches, which I will polish off at the end of the repair. To see the damage clearly and to ensure I get good adhesion with the cold glue system, the best thing to do is to clean the panel to remove any contaminants. Next, on opening up the Glexo cold glue kit, I select a small ball of the glue that would be big enough for the dent I was pulling. And as you can see, you don't need a huge amount when using this system. Using your hands is advisable to manipulate the glue to get it up to a nice warm working temperature. Although as it's the middle of winter and very cold outside, I decided to gently warm the glue up to get it to its optimal working temperature. I then pressed the glue into the smallest pulling tab supplied with the kit and by twisting the tab in the slide hammer, I locked it into place. Using a twisting motion, I pressed the glue into the dent. Given a strong pull on the slide hammer, you can see straight away the immense pulling power of this glue just in case you missed that, let's take a closer look at that again. Wow, the slide hammer doesn't even pull away from the panel. I continue giving a couple more pulls to bring out as much of the lower section as possible. So taking a closer look at the top section, it looked like all the damage had just popped out, but here we can see we still have a couple of horizontal low sections and quite a large crown towards the edge of the door. So normally I would go in behind this panel with my dent bars to push this damage out but instead I'm going to attempt to pull these low areas out only using the Glexo cold glue. So as you just saw, warm the glue up again to get some good adhesion. And using the slide hammer, I'm getting some really good pulls on this damage. Just a couple more pulls and I'm done. So after I'd finished pulling, all that was really left behind was this crown here, which I need to tap back down again. To do this, I'm using this round plastic tip on the end of my knockdown. So in order to bring this high ridge back down cleanly, I take my time making precise hits on the top of this ridge, slowly moving down the panel. And as you can see, I haven't used one PDR bar yet, only the Glexo cold glue system, and already the top section of this door is almost done, and less than half the time it would have took using my traditional PDR bars. Now I'm gonna focus all my efforts on the complex damage at the lower section of the door. Just above the part of the door where the crash bar is pushing through, we have this horizontal crease here, which I'm going to come back to later. 
First, I want to address this high ridge caused by the internal crash bar pushing into the outer door skin. It's quite pronounced, so I'm gonna have to take care of this in a slow, controlled way, so as not to create any further damage. I'm going to continue using my knockdown with a rounded plastic tip, as this will be able to remove this ridge completely. So keep an eye on this light area here and you will slowly start to see it dissipate and smooth back out again by just slowly manipulating the metal with the tap down tool. Okay, now that that's dealt with, it's time to move the light bulb down lower to deal with the damage in this lower section here. First I want to deal with this high area known as a crown shown here in red. For this, I'm still using my tap down, but I'm using the larger, wider tip. I'm using this tip to gently tap this crown back down again and as you can see I'm also using the rounded plastic tip in conjunction with the wider tip to smooth this area back down again. Both tips work really well on getting this high ridge back down again but as you can see it takes a considerable amount of time and patience to achieve this. Okay great, I'm happy that all the other sections are roughed out enough. Time to address the damage at the lowest part of the door which is these three or four low areas you can see here. So I'm continuing on with the Glexo cold glue system. So as before, I push the slide hammer with the glue onto the damage. I can then give a good few sharp pulls to see how much of this damage the cold glue will allow me to pull out. As you can see, this stuff is super sticky. Amazingly enough, it's managed to pull out a fair amount of damage if you look at the before and after shots here. So the next thing to do is to remove all the high areas surrounding these lows to blend them back down again. For this, I'm using the plastic round tip again on my knockdown. Considering I've only used the Glexo cold glue system on this den, I've managed to pull out probably 90% of this damage. Now I do know that this door has had previous paintwork, so I can't finish it off using hot glue, so I'll have to push the rest of this damage out from behind. Now this is a fairly easy door trim to remove. The only piece of trim that needs to come off is this plastic handle trim here, which I removed carefully, which then allowed me access to the torque screw underneath. After this was removed, the next torque screw in the middle of the door can be unscrewed. Once this has been removed, the last thing to do is to turn the plastic bolt head at the bottom of the trim, half a turn to allow the trim to slide off. Next, using some gentle force, the clips that hold the door trim in place can be individually pulled off, and then after a little bit of maneuvering, the trim comes away. The next thing to do is to remove the cable that attaches to the handle, and then remove the wire for the electric window switch. Now to get access into the door, the last thing to do is to gently prise the plastic inspection panel out and put it aside to replace later. Looking inside, we can see that there isn't a great deal of room as we have this large impact protection beam in the way. Before I put the tools down into the door, I first need to anchor the door in place. This is done using my support bar and ratchet strap. So after moving the light into a good position, the first tip I'm going to use is my plastic vinyl tip. I navigate the tip down into the lower section of the door where the deepest low point is. And then before I start to push, I make sure the paint is warmed up slightly so the force of the pushes won't crack the paint. Using the right amount of force, I concentrate on lifting up the sharpest and deepest indentation as you can see at the bottom of the door here. Again, I'm using my tap down with a plastic bullet tip to remove any high areas. The next thing to do is to remove the small line crease that I showed you earlier, which was above the high ridge that I tapped down previously. Looking at the back of the panel, this crease is situated just below this sound deadening material. To remove this fine crease, I'm going to use my plastic bullet tip. As it's a very cold day, the use of gentle heat is really important, especially when pushing something sharp. So using this tip, I carefully push along this crease using some very precise pushes. I have to be careful to stay on target, otherwise I can create high ridges either side of this crease that will make this crease harder to remove and will add more time onto the repair.
After pushing this crease out, I tap down any high areas using my nylon tip on my tap down. Just as I was starting to get into this job, typically it started to rain. So once again, I have to put up the umbrella. I honestly can't wait till summertime. Now this can be the most difficult part of damage to remove on a job like this. To remove this ridge, I'm using the round nylon tip on my knockdown and I'm slowly moving up and down this ridge to flatten it back down again. So the last thing to do is to remove all the small micro lows. For this, I'm using my plastic bullet tip with the large extension. First, I warm up the panel to make sure the paint won't crack. The extension helps me to navigate the tip of the bar down into the lower section under the side impact bar. Then using this tip, I'm able to pick up all the small micro lows that were left over from the cold glue process and the blending process. I'm also continuing to use the nylon plastic bullet tip for tapping down all the micro highs. The next stage is the polishing stage. Here I flat down and remove all the scratches that were highlighted earlier, most likely caused by a plastic bumper brushing up against this door. The last coat of polish here is an ultra fine polish. This puts the shine back on the door and also helps to remove any surface marks from the paintless dent removal process. The only thing left to do is to put the door back together. Once the inspection plate is back into position, it's just a matter of connecting the door lock cable and the electrics back up again. Then with a gentle bit of force, the door trim goes back into place. I can then replace the two screws I removed earlier in the center of the trim and at the top of the panel. I also twist the plastic bolt at the bottom half a turn. Then once the handle trim is popped back into position, I can close the door to check out the final result. Well, I can honestly say I was really impressed with this Glexo cold glue system. It probably allowed me to get this job done in half the time it would have taken using my traditional method of going in behind the panel to push this damage out. The thing I like best about this Glexo cold glue system is there's virtually no setup time at all. You just put the black sticky glue onto the polished tab, press it onto the panel and start pulling away. And best of all, there's no release agent needed to remove it from the panel. And as you saw on this job, I probably pulled out about 90% of this damage just using this system. I think if the door hadn't been creased at the bottom, there was a good chance that this system could have pulled out this damage entirely. I was particularly impressed with how it pulled out the low sections at the top of the door, which meant I didn't have to use one PDR bar in this part of the door at all. So if you aren't using the Glexo cold glue system, I highly suggest you start using it. As you can see from this job, the results speak for themselves. I'll leave a link in the description below of where you can get it. And lastly, for all you conspiracy theorists out there who are probably looking at the aftershot saying, yeah, but the cars move slightly, the lighting's slightly different. Well, you are correct because when I finished putting the door trim back together and started tidying up, this is what happened. So I did still attempt to film some of these aftershots in that weather, but because I was stuck under the umbrella, I had to film them quite close in and it was so dark and it was just impossible. So I went back a couple of days later to get some really good aftershots for you all. Well, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed the video, it'd be great to get a thumbs up. And if you aren't subscribed already, click that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell to be kept in touch with all the latest videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next video.